Bobby Allison was the best stock car driver who ever lived. Bobby had grown up out of those tracks in Florida before they moved to Alabama. My grandfather came to live with us and he would take one of his kids uh, to an event, things like that one night. He said, uh, come on, Bobby, we're going to the car races. And I thought this was the neatest thing I had ever seen. So I got me a helmet, I put a seat belt in that car, and I painted the number on the door with shoe polish and drove out to the racetrack and raced. I don't think we thought that we were better than anybody else, but we could win, and uh, it became a way of life. I won 85 times in nine different brands of cars for 14 different race teams. I went to every race that I could get to. No matter what day of the week it was or how far it was from where I was standing, and we went to Asheville Weaverville and come throwing in there for a 200 lifer and Jack Ingram said, uh, uh oh, here comes that dang Alabama gang. Here comes the Alabama gang. Here comes that damn Alabama gang again. And I thought it just sounded neat. And so we became the Alabama gang. Back at full throttle, the Alabama gang are in control. Bobby Allison had run-ins with driver after driver. Yeah, Bobby Allison has his foot literally through the firewall as he battles tooth and nail door to door with Dale Yarbrough. Richard Petty from the number 43 car, pushed hard by his arch rival, Bobby Allison. The most prolific winners of the past five years, Darrell Waltrip and Bobby Allison, another one of their classic shootouts. You know, everybody that had ever raced Bobby Allison that could beat him had a rivalry with him. Bobby always gave 100% on the racetrack and off the racetrack. You weren't likely to get along too well with Bobby if you didn't give 100%. The weekends when maybe some other families were going to a movie or going to a picnic, we'd be busy with racing. But uh, I felt like I could spend as much time as I really needed to with the family. At the same time, I could spend whatever time I needed to on my racing career. There was anybody that had close to the determination that Bobby Allison had, it was Davey. Davey, from real early, wanted to be with me and work on the car, be with me going to the race. Davey was my buddy. Father and son, first and second, Daytona. come to the strike and the winner of the 30th annual Great American Race, Bobby Allison, Davey Allison, his son in second, Judy Allison is static. What a tremendous family performance. Look at him, Bobby waving to Davey. <laughs> that finish, it was unique and special because it was this family that had dedicated themselves for so long to that contest and to see the two of them have that moment together, that was a very special moment. We're able to enjoy the career that we've had and the family has had in racing and look ahead to whatever next event might come along that we get a little special enjoyment out of. It's a great honor and privilege to welcome to the stage the best driver I know, Bobby Allison. On this, the 23rd day of May, 2011, is my honor to formally induct my brother Bobby Allison into the NASCAR Hall of Fame and present this Hall of Fame ring. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you. And thank God. Uh, what a great country we have. Uh, we get to do these things that we want to do and, uh, and, and have a situation like this. I just want to say what an honor it is to be inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and especially with the group of gentlemen I'm included with, Bud Moore, David Pearson, Lee Petty, and Ned Jarrett. And uh, that is really special to me. I'd like to acknowledge some of the special people in my life who have helped make this possible. My lovely wife, Judy. And, and a lot of my family is here, and I would like for them to stand up, please. All right. Really good. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I need to acknowledge my grandma and grandpa uh, for what they had to go through as I decided I wanted to do this. And uh, convincing them that I could do it and that it was worth doing. Uh, my dad was pretty easy to convince, but my mom really, you know, she wanted me to go to college and, and be a doctor or some kind of uh, professional character from that degree. And uh, I said, Mom, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Um, finally, um, you know, she was really against giving me written permission because I was just 17 that first time, and I had to have written permission of a parent. And uh, she is really sh shying away from that. And I said, Mom, if you give me that written permission, I will improve my grades done deal but she thought she was giving me permission for one week and I thought it was for a hundred years and I won I had some interesting things happen along the way and got started in this Donnie made a few comments that, that I had to really uh, enjoy I hadn't really heard his remarks before he made them up here so uh, I got to hear some things that were pretty cute, and uh, I think about that. But uh, I really wanted to do this. I'd done good with modifieds and sportsmen and had won races and won uh, two modified special championships in a row and, and then two national modified, NASCAR modified championships. And I uh, really wanted to move out with the rest of them big guys, David Pearson and some of his other buddies. and. Um, this Richard Petty. I'd seen Richard Petty in a uh, race in South Florida way years before, and, and I knew this guy was my own age, and here he was doing all these good things and uh, involved in that, and I, I really wanted to go. So um, I gave it a try, but I found out that there was a real separation between the guys that were winning. There was a few factory cars, and then there were all these other guys and trying to get by with year-old equipment and two-year-old equipment, stuff like that and making the next show. So I decided that, that according to the rules, the weight of the car was determined by the size of the engine, the cubic inch displacement of the engine. And so I said, well, I'll just build a Chevelle and put a little engine in it and I'll be able to run light and I'll go to these, some of these short tracks and uh, maybe I can have some success. So we got that thing together and uh, the fifth time out with that, I won my first cup event. I won at Oxford, Maine, Oxford Plains, New York, and uh, just really, really was a shot in the arm. You know, I think about it, and I did win 85 times, my scout's honor, 85 times. But just to try to put that in, into perspective a little bit, that was in nine different brands of cars for 14 different race teams. Now, the way I look at it now, I, I, I did drive pretty good most of the time, but uh, boy, I, I couldn't keep a job. We lost Clifford, we lost Davey. Um, 
it, that was just so hard on on me and Judy. You know, just you know, the world. I hope never is that cruel to any other family again. But it happened. Uh, we survived it. Um, people helped us and supported us, and and I just really appreciate that. And so all I can say is this is a special honor for me and for us. And here we are, and thank God, and God bless America.